Welcome to another In Wheel Time podcast, a 30-minute mini version of the In Wheel Time car show that airs live every Saturday morning, 8 to 11 a.m. Central. It's the In Wheel Time car talk show, and just ahead, we have more all things automotive talk. Plus, Conrad's going to have This Week in Auto History and the cruise-in calendar, and we'll get you caught, caught up on the stories making headlines this week. Howdy, along with David mm. Ainsley, who's filling in for Mr. Mars this week, King Conrad DeLong. We always need more Jeff Zekin. I'm Don Armstrong, and glad you could join us on this Saturday for our live broadcast. By the way, if you're listening on one of our podcasts later on in the week, uh, we do this show live every Saturday, 8 to 11 a.m. Central Time, so you can get the latest and the greatest live and in living color wow. on NBC. No, not on NBC. On Smoke and Mirrors. No, that's uh, you're mistaking it bing, for bing, the Bing, tele- bing, No, not that one. That's the Nobody Cares television. Oh, network. okay. Yeah, that, that NBC. Thanks, Tom. Alrighty. You're welcome. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. We're waiting to get hold of uh, Chad Chung. Hopefully, he's going to call us. Uh, the Rims R Us guy that uh, I had a great time with. Uh, he's an eBay seller. And uh, right spot on. You know, you never know what you're going to get on eBay or anywhere else, for that matter, when you order something online. And especially when it comes to wheels. Let me tell you something. I had no clue. The number of kinds Choices. of wheels out there that are for sale. I didn't even look at them when I came in. I didn't they're not, know on, not, they're not on yet. yet. They're yeah. not on. So Don's I toted them. them over to John Gray over at Gulf Coast Auto Shield. Mm-hmm. Don, don't put them on the car. Let us have the wheels. Let us coat them for you. Prep them. Prep them. And then we'll, you bring the car over when we call you, okay? And we'll change everything out. Great. We'll do that. But I haven't gotten that phone call yet. But but his coating is going to help the wheel not, or the dust from the brakes not adhere yeah. to the wheel. Correct. Which is a big issue with a lot of wheels. Yeah. And uh, so at any rate, uh, we've got got that cooking, and uh, it's in the process. So I took the wheels over there on Monday, in the Seltos, and uh, and got them out of the car, and they stacked them up in the storage room. You know, we did the broadcast from there live last mm-hmm, week. And, mm-hmm. uh, you know, the storage room that we use back there in the back of the shop. And uh, it was interesting because before I left, I went up to say, John, I gave the wheels to Serene. She's got them. Put them in the back. Okay, Don. Hey, uh, thank you very much. He had, I don't know, half a dozen people in his office wanting service. That's what he does. I know. And I didn't want to interrupt that. That's his, that's his, that's his bread and butter. But I'll tell you what, man, that guy's busy. Yep. They're very busy. And busy with, my opinion, an extremely high-end clientele. Yeah. yeah, there was a lot of high-end vehicles there. There's a lot of money in that shop. Yeah. Um, that one guy from the BMW mm-hmm. group impressed me. Mm-hmm. Um, you know. Young guy. Yep, very smart. And then there was the other guy, too, that I don't remember what car he had. He was the guy building the Audi twin turbo. Yeah, that guy. Yep. Young guys that uh, have done well for themselves one way or the other and they are able they're kind of like we were except they've got money we didn't (laughs) we wanted to be we had style we well we had ingenuity we laughing it down there (laughs) we 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 were able to do things with a little money Mm -hmm. you know beg borrow and steal we didn't steal but we did have uh, a group of guys that hey man do you know somebody that's got a manifold aluminum manifold for a for a uh, small block chevy yeah well yeah that and you know a holly well yeah it's all set up you know we got somebody that's got a holly carburetor attached to a small block chevy aluminum manifold probably an edelbrock or something like that and he's wanting to sell it well, you know, put those two things together back in the day were three, <laughs> three, three four, 40 bucks would have bought it. <laughs> yeah, 30, three, three or four hundred dollars new, yep. and somebody wanted to sell it. And they'll, hey, man, I'll, I'll take a I'll take hundred dollars. Will you take 75? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Give him 75? That's how you did it back then. $75 and a lid. <laughs> For you. That would be you. Yeah. A little bit. Yeah. Um, we didn't do that. Mm-mm. No. We didn't, we didn't trade for lids back then. 
but uh, it was always it always fun. And then we'd all get together and help put. You had to go out and buy the gaskets though. Mm-hmm. At at high low auto. High low. High low. Remember high low? No, competition. We didn't have high low. <laughs> we didn't have high low. We had Western and we had a, a, a independent. You had fact, Keystone. No. No. We had uh, there was. A guy I went to high school with us. His name is Douglas Wood. His dad owned Gene's Auto Supply. And I went to school with Gene and his brothers and Todd Sheldon, who's now in Denver. We all hung out together, and uh, we needed parts. We would go there and buy them. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, Hilo was right there at the intersection of Willow Bend and Post Oak. And all of us were in there at some time or another. Mm-hmm. Yes, competition sales was around, but they were over in Spring Branch. And they dealt mainly with the manifolds and the carburetors and then uh, early on i got to uh i found uh, craig bierman at speed and sport chrome plating now chrome and, chrome and plating. the doug headers <clears throat> pardon me and the doug headers doug doug thorley headers yes no i didn't buy any of those because they were way out of my price range for craig it was headman headers yeah okay yeah that's what he had stacked in the house all had, throughout the house i had appliance headers on mine appliance mm-hmm. i never heard of appliance yeah, they're just a low end yeah. header yeah, yeah I, had, I had hookers on my uh Ooh. oldsmobile yeah well you spent the big bucks. No, also I had hookers on my uh, SS three ninety six. He had miles. hookers. Is there a different? Is there a difference between something like you know Doug Thorley or or hooker headers and a headman headers? They're all I, made the same way. Yeah, I don't know that there's a big difference. You know, you can get tube size variation right. depending and on what you want to steel, do. Thickness of the steel, O six O or whatever. Thickness of the yeah. steel, and and then some of them would come wrapped, some of them would come coated. But you know, once you got them wrapped and coated, you were more than doubling the price of them. Yeah. Yeah, no, we we didn't do that. We'd buy used sets of headers that were pre-rusted. You know, you know, that and all <laughs> broken up, or you know, somebody had beat on it, beat set. on it to get it, to get it the to starter, clear, to clear the starter. <laughs> the bottom of them were already flattened out. <laughs> yes, that was, whatever it took, we you know just made it work. JB Weld on them. JB Weld, yeah, uh, good stuff back in the day. Yep, if you owned a. Quadrajet carburetor, you know what JB Weld was. Yeah. That's what you needed to fill those well plugs well, up. He had hookers keep and lids. Them from leaking. Yeah, there's that. <laughs> um, I'm thinking. Uh-oh. Oh gosh, that's what I smelled. This is <laughs> that's right, burning like bad rubber tires. Um, I thought that we would do our Hemmings.com All sold righty. cars roundup. Get ready, David. And you know what's interesting is almost every week. One of the first cars on the opening page is a Cadillac. Yep. Hello. <laughs> and I, I find it interesting. Now, Jeff. There you go. This is one for Kylie, his granddaughter. Oh. It's affordable, and she will be the talk of school. All she right. drives up in this. A 1975. I can see it in my mind. Cadillac Fleetwood. Oh, man. <laughs> She won't be able to fit it in the garage, but... It's going to need two parking spots. <laughs> yeah. But uh, so how much do you think that that sold online at an online auction called... $6,000. $6,000. Mm-hmm. I'll say nine. Nine. Seventy eight hundred. Seventy eight hundred. right in the middle. Okay. Well, uh, it actually sold for $16,800. Oh, wow. It looks brand shape. new. Yeah, it looks in good shape. Yeah. Uh, Four-door. Uh, with a looks like it has a vinyl roof, but I don't well, know. It, yeah, it's <laughs> and it's bigger than a school bus. Yeah, no <laughs> doubt. Uh, here's a 2004 Corvette that's a C5, and it sold for 29.4. All right, moving on to another Corvette, a 1999 Chevrolet Corvette Coupe. It also is a C5. What do you think? It looks like it. Has, well, I don't know whether it has two roofs, but. At least they got the roof panel removed, so you can see it. Um, how much do you think a 1999 Chevy Corvette would go for? It looks clean. Uh, it's certainly not rusted, but um, we don't know how many miles Corvette are rusted. Rust, yeah. 16. 16? Yeah, I'll say 18. Well, right in the middle. 17, 325 is what it went for. That's what David guessed. Mm-hmm. Well, that would, is that, well, that was the... I think that was the Cadillac Fleetwood. We didn't give him a chance to guess. That's no, what we didn't. Uh, got it. I got it excluded. Here's yeah. another Cadillac. <laughs> All right. This one's it's a, a little, good day. This one's a little bit newer. Uh, 1997 Cadillac DeVille. Sedan DeVille. 23. Don't base it on the other one that you that we did earlier. This. I'll go, I'll I'll go, go 2300. 
79 or 97? 1997, 97. Cadillac oh. sedan de Ville. All right. Beige. Oh, that, that raises the price. <laughs> Let's go 12. I'll, I'll go give me, 5. Give me a 12. 5. Conrad is going to be David? almost the winner on that. 5 they, and 12? Yeah, that's oh, kind wow. of spread. But um, So Eight, here it 8, is. 000. 1997 Cadillac sedan de Ville. Beige. For $4,000. Uh, <laughs> hold me back. <laughs> Yeah. 71 Ford Mustang. Ooh. What would you pay for a 71 Ford Mustang? Looks straight. It's a white car with black stripes on it. I don't know anything about all of it. Looks like a GT something. And um, I will give you a hint that it is priced in that range of a GT. 31. 31. What would you say? Twenty-five, forty-seven thousand $47,250. Wow. So it must be a real... David, apparently David. he doesn't want to know your number. <laughs> no, I don't. I would have been away off. I would have, too. I would have, too. Um, 1992 Jeep Wrangler. Ooh. Um, I don't... Stock wheels. Square and headlights or no, round headlights? No, I think it's got round headlights is what it appears to be. David, you go first. Mm-hmm. Let's say that again. What was the... It's a 1992 <laughs> Jeep Wrangler. You know, it's a two-door, obviously, yeah. because they didn't make four doors back then. It's blue with a black uh, cloth top. 9,000. 9,000. Conrad? 12. 12? I was going to go right in the middle of 11. 7,500. Oh. oh but, you know, you, but, you know, I am too. But, you know, the other thing is with those, you don't know how hard it's been beat. Yeah. Yes, it's you been do. replaced. <laughs> you know, it's been beat senseless. <laughs> At some point. But it's made to be beat, mm-hmm. you know. Now, has it been wrecked or something? No, nah, I don't know. This is a Stan Holt car, a 2000 Uh-oh. BMW Z3. Oh, cool car. Stan had one of those. Very cool car. Yeah, he may still have it. I don't know. A 2000 BMW Z3. Convertible. Oh, yeah. Um, it was a little hot rod. It mm-hmm. had the six-cylinder mm-hmm. in it, straight six in it. And Great handling car. Great yes. handling go-kart. car. Yeah, yeah, it was like a go-kart. This one is brown, medium brown. Gosh. I know. Just a, who, That's who ugly. Would, who would That's do that? ugly brown. Okay, well, how much do you think that that 2000, which is now 23 years mm-hmm. old, how much do you think that they got for that car? 18. I'm 18. thinking 21,000. 30,000. Thirteen thousand five hundred forty-five dollars, and it looks clean. It's a lot less than I thought. We don't call it medium brown; we call it root beer. Yeah, well, it's it's not really dark enough to be root beer, I don't think. Cream soda. Uh, Nineteen ninety-three, OJ, Ford Bronco, white. Nope. <laughs> Got Al Cowling in the passenger seat. <laughs> <laughs> Driving slowly down the 405. With, yeah, with with OJ hiding in the back on the floor. With a wig on. With a wig on. Yeah. Uh-huh. And, a, and a fake mustache. Now, you know, it's a 1993. So, so it's 20 years old. No, it's 30, 30 years, years old. old. 30 years old. So you know it's got some mileage on it. Uh, and that old Bronco is a two-door, and it's got that removable cap on the back. 1993. What do you think that something 6, like that? 6,000. 6,000. 11,000. I was going to go 11. I'll go a little bit less. I'll go 9,800. 17,850. Oh, wow. wow. It looks clean, but, you but, know, it, but it got, has history. It has history. <laughs> That's right. And it's probably got a million miles on it. It doesn't look like it. It looks yeah. like a clean car. And a glove in the back seat. Now, for all of you old timers that are probably dead by now, a 1910 McLaughlin Buick. I've never heard of such a thing. I don't know what a McLaughlin Blue Buick is, but I'll see it in a few moments. Yes, you will. I matter, matter of fact, I'm going to McLaughlin up. must have been a coach builder for Buick. There it okay. is. Yeah. You see it down there? Yep. It's like a kitty ride. Like it yeah. does look like a kitty ride. From uh, cool. Disney. Yeah. 1910. Chitty, chitty, bang, bang. Because, you know, I don't really, I know nothing about that Those era of cars. automobiles. That was the beginning of the automotive industry. The, the classic stuff. Yeah. Wood I mean, wheels. I like wood it. wheels. And uh, guess? It, it's pretty looking, but I mean, I wouldn't touch that with a 10 foot pole or several ten, of them. 10 grand? I mean, it's, it's got, it's history. It is history, but. Um, uh, yeah, I was going to say 12. I'll go 20. 
25883. Wow. wow. Cool, cool color. Blue. Yeah, blue, for, yeah, yeah. It is. I know nothing about the car. This is not one of my favorite Ford Thunderbirds. I'm going to tell you that right straight up. A 1964 Ford oh. Thunderbird. Oh. It's the big with the round. Yeah, I like it. The, uh, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. we saw we saw one or two at uh, Craig's place not very long ago. Yeah, a '64 Ford Thunderbird. What do you think that that would sell for? It's kind of like got fender skirts on the back. Yeah. It. it's a big car for mm-hmm. a two door car. And the ones you generally see it now, it has all... a back seat, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, 64? It, it had a back seat. You could put a tonneau on it. You could put a tuna on it, make it look like a two-door. Yeah. But I think this one's good. Or a two-seat. The ones you see nowadays, the paint's all cracked. And, and anyway, 64 Ford Thunderbird, what would you think that that would go for? I'm going to say, I'll just give 10. Just I'll, 10. I'll say 16. I was going to go on the high side. How about 20? $12,600. Hmm. And I guess the point that I'm trying to make here is the fact that for the most part, I think that you could find some real bargains and some real things here, but boy, you have to do some really steep research on it. Make sure that it's all straight. You probably have to send somebody out yep. to inspect the car well, for that's, you that's or fly up say. there yourself. I would think you would have to have somebody go take a Here's peek one at the that car. I would be interested in an 85 GMC S15. That's a little the little the little truck, yeah. okay? Uh, it's sold for $5500. It looks clean. You know, got a aftermarket grill on it, but it looks clean. It would be a starter car. Yeah. Kylie car. Mm -hmm. Uh, 81 Land Cruiser that you couldn't put me in jail before I would buy something like this. (laughs) $45,150 and it's brown. Does it come with its own wrecker? Uh, No, but its own mechanic is traveling (laughs) Uh, with you. All that root beer. How about the 2006 AM General Humvee? No. Now, this oh. is the real deal military vehicle. Have, oh. you, ever, have you ever Brit been in one of those? Yes. Oh, yeah, I have. drove them. Yeah, drove them. It, it is a beast with that oh, yeah. diesel engine in it that sits right here next to you. Yeah, and that, and that was the 6.5 GM diesel, the Chevy diesel, that um, had a mechanical fuel pump on it, not the electric. See, when GM sold them through that engine retail in the pickup trucks, it had an electric. Uh, part of a fuel this pump one had that mechanical. had a mechanical because they wanted the mechanical because it was more dependable sure. for the military. Yep. We did a we did a show uh, in Orlando with ATD and they one of the wheel companies had one all it was black it had striping on it and everything it was the, it was the the Gen One it was the military one it was pretty cool sat yeah. in the back seat you needed to you know communicate for people all around. It was, yeah, almost it was had a to have good a headset on. Exactly. Exactly. It was huge. It's and, huge. you know, the lanes are so wide. This thing covered the lane yep. plus. It yep. was really wide. Well, this 2006 uh, went for $28,875. Worth luck. every penny of it. Yeah, but if you How could much? use it, 28000 Wow. Almost twenty nine. Let me see that. Yeah. Um, and the last one here is the BMW 535i from 2011. It's a good-looking car. 2011. BMW 535i. What do you think it sold for? And it's interesting because I, my eyes went to it when I saw the for sale sign. And 20, Twenty-two thousand. I would say twenty-three. Yeah. Thirteen thousand six hundred fifty dollars. Wow. That's a steal. Mm-hmm. It is well, well, you don't know the condition. Exactly. Well, you know, but when you watch some of the Meekum stuff, yeah. You know, because I love watching Meekum. You, you know, you, even if even if it's on and all I have on is a closed caption and I'm not listening to them talk, but I can read what they're saying. It's amazing how some of that what I consider extremely high dollar European stuff yeah. goes super cheap. Yeah. Well, they were you know. just in Vegas what a yeah. week or so ago. Right, right, I didn't right. watch any of it. Well, I will tell you this. You know, and Meekum is coming up here in Houston this uh, late winter, early spring. What is that, March? Usually March. Yeah, March. Yeah. Uh, at any rate, it, if you're a car person, which you're listening to this show, you cl- clearly are, I would encourage you to go to the Meekum auction. Pay the, because the deal with the Meekum auction is what you see on television is when they cross the block. That's pretty much all you mm-hmm. see. But all of those cars are sitting inside there mm-hmm. for you to go up, poke around, look mm-hmm. underneath them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. See the actual condition of it. Take a flashlight if you're interested in buying something, yeah. so you can actually see. And in some instances, talk to the owner. Yeah, because yeah, a lot of those around, owners yeah. are standing around. Right. Well, and you also, you, when you enter, and if you are a bidder, you get a book. And yes. You can find out just the preliminary it's information on general, the of the car. Exactly, yeah. and then you deep dive from there. All right. Um, um, 
Let's do this week in auto history, shall we? Got it. Are queued you up. ready to do that? Yeah. This week in auto history. Sure. Okay. Uh, we're ready. In 1942, this week, the first production Ford Bomber B-24 Liberator rolled off the assembly line at Ford's massive Willow Run plant in Ypsilanti, Michigan. Uh, two years earlier, President Franklin Delano Roosevelt urged isolationist um, Henry Ford to prepare for the inevitable involvement in war, creating the U.S., making the U.S. industry become part of the great arsenal of democracy. And Ford built a bazillion of these B-24 Liberators. And then in 1960, the first International Scout all-terrain vehicle rolled off the assembly line at International Harvester's Fort Wayne assembly plant. The Scout became the best-selling vehicle in international history, enjoying a full 10 years of production before being replaced by the much-improved Scout II in 1971. And by the way, the Scout's coming back. Go ahead. Okay. And that was kind of the forerunner to the uh, first-generation uh, Bronco as well. That's not the Bronco. No. In 1979, the last Pacer was produced by American Motors. <laughs> the bubble top Yay. Pacer was a reasonably popular economy car. I don't know that I'd say that, but I did. Uh, though its <laughs> Jetson-styled body attracted a flack from car critics and stand-up comedians alike. You know, I remember, who was the guy that did the commercial, the Goldfish commercial about the Pacer? No I need a martini. The actor, yeah. the uh, former sp sportscaster here in town, she had one of those things, and I uh, used to make fun of that, that car. That was butt ugly. You leave my car alone. I like my car. But the, the, one of the creative things about it, the two door, the driver's side door was like six or eight inches longer than the passenger side door, so it made it easier to get into the back. The oddest thing. In 1984, <laughs> General Motors announced that it would stop production of diesel engines. At the time, they were old automobile diesel engines. Uh, according to GM, the diesel motors get excellent miles and produce plenty of power, but tend to be noisy and produce heavy exhaust. Uh, the tightening emission laws drove GM to abandon the diesels altogether. So GM had a full range of diesel engines, mostly V8s. In 1979, it was offered in the Cutlass. Instead of it being a 350 cubic inch, it was a 260 cubic inch diesel. That car didn't have enough power to clear a speed bump unless you get a running start at it and i was working on them at the time they were horrible horrible pieces of garbage and i remember working on them coming right off the transport truck and knocking the engine was knocking hammering coming off the transport truck the crankshaft was physically broken in three places and the guy drives it off the transport truck they parked it right in my stall and said you fix it i'm like oh christ <laughs> what a mess, and then and then they and 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 then they uh, came out with a V6 diesel. Um, that's still the uh, the 88, which was real popular, and they sold a ton of them. And then in the Cutlass Sierra, they offered a V6, which was a, an exceptional diesel. Really did a nice job with that. Um, I, I had one for a company car and got like 40 miles to a gallon in it. But your feet, your fingers stunk because you had to put diesel fuel in it. Was you know, and then uh, Ignacio uh, Lopez resigned in 1996 uh, from Iggy. <laughs> from General Motors uh, under charges of industrial espionage. And come to think about it, you know, I think he was stealing all of GM's diesel ideas and brought them over to Volkswagen and created all the nightmares of Volkswagen diesels. Interesting. But they said he had stolen trade secrets from General Motors he like when, he defected to, uh, when he defected to Volkswagen. Looks like a spy. That's this week in auto history. Okay, well, we're not done with you yet. Let's do the cruise-in calendar. You've got exactly... A minute and a half. Uh, Riverfront Rally Show and Shine in uh, Port Neches. Uh, that's over in Mars's area. Ocean View Classics Meat and Toy Drive on Bayshore Boulevard in, or Bayshore Drive in La Porte, Texas, is uh, this afternoon, and uh, it's a cruise in. The entry is free. Uh, asking for car uh, or toy donations. Coastal A's Rod and Car Show on uh, Staples Street in Corpus Christi is this weekend. Uh, again, a toy do toy donation requested. Another toy drive at. Uh, 2470 FM 1960 West. Uh, again, it's another open meet with a toy drive donation. 
uh, Espresso and uh, or Octane and Espresso at Black, Black Rifle Coffee on Highway Six, um, <clears throat> and then uh, the Car Culture Toy Drive uh, in River Oaks on Kirby Drive is uh, tomorrow at 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. That should be that should be a pretty good one. And then finally, uh, Cars and Cocktails Toy Drive at Sawyer Park Ice House. Yeah, on, off of Pruitt Road in Spring, Texas, is tomorrow from 11 to 3. Okay. I've had people ask me, hey, man, when's that uh, tailpipes and tacos cruise in going to be again? We don't know yet. I'm glad that it's paused, however, <laughs> because the weather has not been really cooperative yeah, been, here the past few weeks, especially on the weekends. It's not been predictable. <clears throat> and um, not only that, it's about to turn cold. Yeah. Uh, it's going to turn cold tomorrow, yeah. high tomorrow at 55, with a low, I think, Monday night, Tuesday of 39. Mm-hmm. Seriously? Yeah. yeah. And, cool. then, uh, and here we are today in short sleeves, <laughs> and it's uh, 77 degrees yesterday it's afternoon. It's balmy out there. It was yeah. balmy, yeah. Well, next week is locusts. <laughs> locusts, that's it. Hey, uh, we're time now for a quick break, and we'll be right back. You're on the In Wheel Time Car Talk Show. You own a car you love. Well, why not let Gulf Coast Auto Shield protect it? Houstonian John Gray invites you to his state-of-the-art facility to introduce you to his specialist team of auto enthusiasts. We promise you'll be impressed. Whether you're looking to massage your original paint to a like-new appearance, apply a ceramic coating, install a paint protection film, nano-ceramic window tint, or new windshield protection called ExoShield, Gulf Coast Auto Shield is where Houston's car people go. Curbed your wheels? Instead of buying new, why not have them repaired? How about a professionally installed radar detector? Gulf Coast Auto Shield does that too. Get a peek inside the shop and look at the services offered by getting online and heading to gcautoshield.com. Better yet, stop by their facility at 11275 South Sam Houston Tollway, just south of the Southwest Freeway, and get a personal tour. Gulf Coast Auto Shield is your place to go for all things exterior. Call them today, 832-930-5655 or gcautoshield.com. The original group of Loopy Tortilla Restaurants will have you telling your family and friends just what the original recipes mean when it comes to the best fajitas in Southeast Texas. Founder Stan Holt invites you to visit the original Loopy Tortilla near I-10 and Highway 6. Here's the original house that inspired the design of all the rest and the original charm that helped make Loopy Tortilla the go-to destination for Houston Tex-Mex. Speaking of original, nothing can compete with the original lime pepper marinade that everyone will agree makes Loopy Tortilla award-winning beef fajitas the best anywhere. Loopy Tortilla Katie is another location that gives you the same quality and service Houstonians have come to expect at Loopy's. It's located just off I-10 of the Grand Parkway at Kingsland Boulevard in Katie. Find yourself in Aggie Land? Head to the Loopy Tortilla and College Station. Located just around the corner from Kyle Field, it's a great place to enjoy those famous frozen margaritas before or after the game. Headed east to Louisiana? Stop in at the Loopy Tortilla in Beaumont. It twos on I-10. You can't miss it. The original group of Loopy Tortilla Restaurants invites you in for the best Tex-Mex anywhere. The In Wheel Time Car Talk Show is now part of the iHeart family. Now you'll have access to 24-7 Car Talk anytime you need a fix. Just download the iHeart Radio app and ask for In Wheel Time Car Talk, and there we are. Be sure to save us in your iHeart library for instant access. No matter where you are, you have the best Car Talk Show right on your PC, laptop, or mobile device and never have to worry about finding us again. Of course, you can always get access to our video and audio streams via InWheelTime.com and your favorite podcast channel, and all of this is free to you. From the iHeartRadio app, you'll not only hear our Saturday morning live show, but the best shows of the past, updated weekly. Never miss a minute of up-to-date new car reviews, pre-owned reviews, Conrad's Car Clinic, informative interviews, automotive news, and the most fun car talk show on the planet. Just download the iHeartRadio app, search for In Wheel Time Car Talk, save it to your library, and with a tap of the icon, you'll be in touch with your favorite car talk team. In Wheel Time Car Talk, streaming now on iHeart.com slash In Wheel Time Car Talk. That's it for this podcast episode of the In Wheel Time Car Show. I'm Don Armstrong, inviting you to join us for our live show every Saturday morning, 8 to 11 a.m. Central on Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, and our InWheelTime.com website. Podcasts are available on Apple Podcasts.